Hey everybody, it's Al, and uh, I recently purchased a Bergeralt 3.5 Octave Signature Series Vibraphone, and when I was doing uh, the research on it, I didn't, I didn't really uh, find a lot of information about uh, the specifics on it, um, other than it's 3.5 Octaves and it's a Vibraphone. Uh, Jerry Teshwa had received one, and I thought those sound samples sounded pretty good. I was, needed to buy a new instrument for quite a while. Uh, and I've always been curious on a three and a half octave instrument, um, so I pulled the plug and bought it, and uh, I'm glad I did. It's a great sounding instrument, but um, I wanted to give people a little bit of a review on uh, the parts of it that you know you can't really find anywhere else. So uh, it sets up pretty pretty straightforward, um, and I'll give you some sound samples a little bit later on, as you can see, uh, you know how big the sound on it is because it's really huge. But um, it is big uh, and it weighs a lot. So that's one thing to consider. Um, I bought the cases for it. Uh, the cases added another 1700 uh, to the price, uh, so that was a lot. Um, but I gig a fair amount, and uh, you know I wanted to really protect it because if you're going to buy a $9,000 instrument, it'd be kind of silly to not protect it. Anyway, uh, I'm going to set it up for you here. You can see how it lays out and all that stuff, and uh, we can go from there, and then we'll get some sound samples a little bit later on. Hold on. So here you can see it, um, it's kind of laid out, behind it is my old M55, that's a project instrument. Um, the bags are uh, tailored to fit the instrument itself, so they fit nice and snug in there, which is good because they were, uh, they were a little bit expensive, but um, then they, it, they come in three parts, so you got the main frame there on the left, the resonators that are standing up on the right, uh, and then the bars kind of fold into a, a little bag there, you can't really see it, it's a little bit of focus, it's uh, down there. So uh, I'll set it up for you. It sets up pretty much like any other instrument. Yeah, I'll try that. So the one thing about the bags is that they also take up a lot of space. When you're setting it up, you need to about double the space that you would for the instrument itself. So that's a thing to take into consideration. You can also do it vertically if you have something to lean it against, like these resonators. But again, this is like 70 pounds, so watch out. Kind of fits on the top of the leg down here, and it's got this nice little, uh, little nipple there that kind of fits into a pocket, which is nice. Um, it makes it kind of secure, and it makes it so that you don't have to really worry about if it's in the right spot or not. It's got these pretty, uh, pretty big little tighteners for the screws. Those are very convenient. back into focus, but the bag has a, another thin slot on top. I'm not really quite sure what that's for. I tried putting a crossbar in there when I first got the instrument, but um, that made this main bag about 85 pounds, and that was uh, really heavy, uh, especially if you had any stairs or anything. Um, so I took that off, and it kind of lightened it down to the point where it's pretty manageable. Uh, so the bar uh, that attaches the pedal to the damper bar, this guy here, kind of has this weird little, it attaches to the pedal in this kind of weird little uh, knob here that, uh, I don't know if you can see it in the light, but it kind of snaps on to this little ball on the pedal here. It's an interesting little attachment. Um, it's pretty easy. And then it just hooks in like you have any other vibraphone there. It's got a nice, uh, Nice sturdy casters on it, uh, four four locks on on all the casters. One lock on each caster, four casters I guess. Um slide it in and then what I found out recently is if you uh, actually slide it back a smidge, it's better uh, aligned to the bars. Okay. I'm going to give you a little bit of a view of the motor 
here. So here it is set up without the bars on it. Um, you know, standard felt damper on the top there. Pretty straightforward. Uh, nice little detail here is the way the uh, the bars that hold the damper on are curved up over the uh, resonators. That's pretty cool. It's got these nice little blue accent marks in like three places. So here on the uh, on the wheels for the that spin the fans, and then another one on the um, down here on the hook uh, that uh, connects the rod to the damper. Uh, nice little. Nice little touches. Uh, this motor here is uh, built into the M block speed control that is anyway. I'm going to kind of go into a little bit of a side thing here because um, so it's pretty easy. Turn it on, set your speed, start stop button there. It's pretty cool. Uh, so this is, you can't see it from this angle, but um, the motor is, yeah. yeah, so it's in that little uh, vented box here. It's actually, you can see it. Um, it's an oriental motor, uh, same one as the uh, must survivor phones, at least for a while. They were, had the oriental motor, I believe it's 2IK6RA motor. Uh, and the reason I'm going into this small detail is um, the way it's connected, you can see here, uh, to the power supply. So the power comes, it goes into the end block, into the speed controller and then out into uh, the motor via this uh, serial port here. Um, the reason that is convenient is because I am going to uh, Oriental Motor Company sells a external speed controller that you can connect a external potentiometer to and that is pretty simple to connect to a volume pedal of some sort. So I'm going to at some point get that doohickey set up. The speed controller from Oriental Motor Company is about a hundred bucks. Uh, and then however much for the, the pedals, probably another 100 bucks. So just as a side note, that's what you can do there. I'm going to finish setting this up, and then I'll uh, give you some simple sound samples. about the, uh, the way it was shipped, uh, it all came in one big box, uh, so everything was kind of layered on top of it. It came uh, face down, and uh, there was, you know, some sty like thick styrofoam uh, end block protectors. Um, that being said, it was still in a, in a ton of uh, bubble wrap, um, so it was packed well, but it was, uh, it was upside down, so it was resting on the pins. One of the pins was bent slightly. Uh, and you can't really see it from here, but some of them have a little bit of scuff up marks from uh, the shipping container. So that wasn't super great. Um, you know, that being said, that that was the only issue that I had with, with that. And, you know, it's a big instrument to ship. The curb weight on the box was 295 pounds, just so you know. Um, it was heavy. So that was definitely a two-person job. Uh, I brought it from Ted Brown. They were uh, really helpful. They're a local... Uh, Pacific Northwest um, instrument dealer, and they were really helpful getting that into my house, so that was cool. Uh, so here it is all set up. Um, I'm using uh, I'm using sound samples. These are some Blue House mouths that I kind of played around with on their website to get a, a good good sound on. Um, these are the ones I use in the uh, in the studio here. Uh, when I'm playing live, I have another set uh, that are harder, just a little bit, because I played with a pretty loud loud group, these, uh, these ones here, um, and it's, it's pretty cool, I'll do a little sound sample later so you can kind of see, these are the harder ones I use, but uh, you know, the good thing is, is that the low end, even in a loud setting, is still pretty beefy sounding, that was kind of what I was after, because I know some of the three and a half octaves that exist, their low end is pretty thin, you get a lot of overtones, um, so uh, this end mount is marginally softer, these are all medium core Blue House mallets. Uh, and this one has just a, a softer yarn and a little bit of a, I think the uh, attack on the head is a little bit different. You can kind of play around on their website with all sorts of variables, so it can be a little bit of a black hole on that.
But uh, that being said, I'll give, just give you some uh, some basic sound samples of how it sounds on its own without much going on. <laughs> So yeah, these are the other mallets that I'm using. I use these when I play with a, a larger group that's a little bit louder. Uh, in the studio, they're, they cut a little bit more. Um, so on the lower end, which I think you know is, is one of the bigger reasons for buying a, a three and a half octave instrument, just you know these extra five notes. But um, you know I think it's a it, it adds a lot to the range. The instrument's really easy to play. Uh, the sound is, is really just great to work with. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll let you know how these sound here. Said that in the studio they sound a little bit different, but in the live setting, the low notes, the, the bottom end still really cuts through, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. 